As more and more devices that connect to the internet are mobile devices, those characteristics are starting to challenge aspects of the internet's original architecture. So let me give you some examples. Some of these are things that you know, we've talked about in the past, um, but they're still good, good to keep in mind. So uh, addressing has become something that's been a lot more challenging. So um, you know, the original internet had this idea of IP addresses. IP addresses were going to be allocated to network providers that we're going to allocate them to machines and that all works fairly well when those machines don't move. Once those machines start to move, um, the same phone that connects to a Wi-Fi network when I'm at work, when I go home, connects to a different network with a different service provider. So as this device moves from one network to another, um, its IP address may change. And any connections that I want to establish to, to transmit data will have to be uh, somehow uh, altered. So the way that TCP responds to this right now is not very well. Uh, when the IP address changes, connections have to be torn down and reestablished. It's basically the equivalent of taking the device, disconnecting it from the network entirely, and reconnecting it at a new location with the new IP address. And that's quite disruptive to certain types of services that are trying to maintain long-lived connections with servers and other types of resources. So that's one problem. Um, it, in other, you know, even just the mobility of devices within the same network. So imagine that you connect your device to your university's Wi-Fi network and you start walking around. Think about what's happening. So as you walk around, you start off connected to one router and then a couple buildings later, you're still connected to the network but you're connected to a different router. And the process of it making these handoffs within the network itself is something that uh, wireless networks have, have had to learn to do. So as you're moving, you need to decide, okay, I'm gonna disconnect from this router, I'm gonna reconnect to a different router that's uh, hopefully part of the same system, right? It has the same SSID, so I can continue to sort of move from router to router as I move, move along. And this is a, a, an access pattern that we see much more often because people carry devices from one place to another as those devices themselves are mobile. Um, so that's uh, one, one challenge of this. The, the other um, interesting opportunity has, has arisen because of the fact that frequently you know, a device may be connected to multiple networks at one time. So this is my attempt to draw an LTE tower. My smartphone, when it's in uh, range of a Wi-Fi access point, may also have a pretty good connection via LTE. And so now I have a case where the device with two radios has two separate connections to the internet. Those connections are going to have different IP addresses. Um, and trying to uh, take advantage of properties of both of those connections can be difficult because the underlying internet architecture wasn't designed around this idea that I would have uh, multi-home devices. This is what it referred to. So a device that is simultaneously connected to two different parts, two different networks that make up the internet. How do I use those both at the same time, uh, potentially, or trade off uh, between them depending on uh, which one is more suitable for what I'm doing at the particular moment. And, and of, of course, I have the same roaming problems here. What I really want is I want the device to be able to maintain its connection to the internet and to maintain some sort of identifier as it moves from inside where I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I walk out the door and now I have an LTE connection, I get in my car, drive home, I still have LTE, I, I've gone from tower to tower on the LTE network, I get home, I walk in the door and now I have my home Wi-Fi connection. I want that, you know, I should be able to be watching, hopefully not watching a video, but like streaming music or doing something um, through that whole process and I want that to happen seamlessly. So I don't want the device to continue to disconnect and that the stream stops and things like that. That's sort of annoying. So this, this is tough. Um, you know, and, and finally, of course, you know, the big challenge for um, the, the, the web is this idea of this guy. Right, so these small displays trying to make the internet um, scale down. Something that you know we got used to having pretty beefy devices at the edge of the network and we got used to them having these big displays. And so a lot of how the web is designed, a lot of how web pages are built, you know these web pages that load these like huge, or you used to, this is starting to, to go away happily, but you would go to web pages that download megabytes worth of material to produce some sort of fancy flash animation and you try to run this on your phone and it almost crashes because it's so heavyweight. 
So, you know, it, we already had a little bit of a problem before with web designers tending to assume that everybody had really powerful internet connections and huge displays, just like them. And now we have people in countries with tiny little smartphones with pretty bad data connections, and they're trying to browse the same internet that's supposed to work for me on a beefy device with a big display. So figuring out how to get that to work is also something uh, that's going to challenge us. And, you know, we're starting, to, we're starting to sort of solve some of these problems, and we have to, because there are so many mobile devices that are coming online.